Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry show, which means joining me all the way from London, England, is the beautiful and brilliant Katie Hopkins. Welcome back, Katie. Oh, thank you so much, Barry. And as I like to dutifully remind our lovely family, if they want to see more of us straight to their phones, they can text the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, to the numbers 88202, and they will get you straight into their pocket. Who wouldn't want that, Barry? Well, and they get you too, hon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Incredible news out of uh, Customs and Border Patrol, uh, Border Protection officials rather. They're suggesting now that there are up to 13,000 unaccompanied minors on their way into the United States. They say it's the highest, get this, numbers in the history of the United States, the highest numbers of migrant children sent north with no parents, which means the United States will let them in, will shelter them, will feed them, will educate them, and maybe unite them with their families. But the word is out all over Central and South America, Katie Hopkins, send your kids and we'll take care of them for free. I mean, there's just two awful sides to it, aren't there? There's the awfulness of people sending kids, you know, like a fishing line, fishing out with their kids in the hope that they can reel in that line later, knowing that some of the worst things humanity has on offer can happen to those children. None of us want that. We wouldn't want it for our kids and we don't want it for anyone else's. And then there's just the sheer volume of this. You know, Biden can't have any of this with media coverage at all. And you're pr completely right, I think, Barry, aren't you? That they will just be funneled through, let them in, keep processing them through, anything to avoid any of the negativity that Trump had to face about the cages that weren't even his in the first place. Oh yeah, and, and get this, I, I'm looking on my screen of these beautiful t-shirts and signs, which somebody is paying a small fortune for, passing them out on the other side of the border, Biden, please let us in. And obviously is supporting a mass immigration effort that is encouraging, I, I, I'm gonna mean the number, tens of thousands coming north and requesting asylum. So they're holding up these banners that someone printed. They're shouting slogans that someone taught them and they are fully organized and funded by some group on the left that, hello, Come to the United States. It's all going to be free. And the cameras cross the border and take pictures of them. And Ocasio-Cortez, our best friend in the Congress, is saying we shouldn't even lock them up. We ought to just let them come through. It's, it does make you wonder, doesn't it, when you see this sort of thing, you know, that element of coordination, not only between the press and Biden's administration, but between Biden, the press, the people on the ground who are doing this. And we know that it's those NGOs typically that we see responsible for it. And we saw, I think with the last caravan that was organized, didn't we Barry? People being put on expensive buses, being sort of shipped up to your border, being paid at the end of the day. This is a coordinated attack on not only the borders of America, but of America itself. And very often the leaders of these NGOs describe themselves as American, how can you be American and organize an attack on your own country like this? Well, let me add insult to injury, Katie Hopkins. There is now a fatwa, a religious edict from Qatar, uh, a US friend and ally supposedly, that is now being publicized uh, around the world. It, this fatwa is saying that if a Muslim lives in a non-Muslim nation, they're obligated under religious Muslim doctrine to hate the adopted nation and its infidel citizens. So if any of those tens of thousands coming north are practicing Muslims, they're obligated by religious edict to hate their hosts, take the gifts the host gives you 
and hate them so that when the time comes, you, the good Muslim immigrant, can rise up and participate in the takeover of the host country. In the meantime, free food, free shelter, free health care, maybe employment, but you must show your love and fidelity to your native religion, which is Islam. Is that happening in Europe? Because if it's happening here, it scares the heck out of me. Yeah, it absolutely is happening here. You can feel the gulf and the divide between the Muslim communities that live here and other communities. It, it's like night and day. Uh, they are heavily congregated in certain areas. Uh, British police or rather non-Muslim police are excluded. The Imam gets to choose who's allowed to police the area. You know, I'm just giving that as an example of the separation. They have no wish to be part of Western culture because they hate it. Um, and one of the recent surveys of British Muslims um, showed that I think it was 52% thought homosexuality should be illegal and over 100,000 British Muslims sympathised with suicide bombers. One in three British Muslims said they would not report a family member to the police if they thought he was going to commit an act of terror. And I think that just is indicative, and that was a Channel 4, a sort of state broadcaster survey, it's indicative they're willing to harbour people who willingly want to do us harm because they think that's right and permitted according to you know exactly your point that they've been instructed to hate the country that hosts them. Well, let me read you so that none of our viewers think we're taking this out of some context improperly. I'm going to read you from Quran chapter five. Okay. This is a quote. Oh, you who believe... Do not take the Jews and the Christians for friends and allies, for they are friends and allies of each other. And whoever among you befriends them is from among them. Allah does not guide the unjust people. So the, that's an unquote, the, the religious edict is based on that, which says don't befriend your hosts if they are not Muslims, because they are the unjust people. You can take their stuff until the time comes where you can install religious government and the religious government they're talking about in the Quran, obviously, is Islam. And, and there's places, of course, you can feel that coming. You know, we already have courts that are run by the um, mosque. We already have that level of, of complete separation, housing, homes, schools. Uh, as part of this survey that we were just talking about, Barry, one of the questions, I don't even get the question, but 35% of British Muslims think Jewish people have too much power. I, I don't even think about who's got the power in terms of religion. You know, what is with that weird hatred of, you know, the other, this idea you have to hate Christians, you have to hate Jewish people. It's not something that comes naturally to a British national, but it certainly comes natural to this other population we host here. Well, if your Bible and you believed in your Bible said, hate Muslims, never trust Muslims, pretend to be nice to them until you can conquer them. Well, if you were a religious lady and you were observant, that's what you would do. Well, the roles are reversed and that's exactly what the book says. So here's my question for you. All of Europe has taken in a profound number of immigrants uh, under the guise of saving them in the name of humanity. What's going on in Europe? Are these immigrants assimilating and becoming good Frenchmen, Englishmen, Swedes, Germans? Are the refugees just taking support, going on the dole and hating their adopted countries as we just talked about? Or in some cases, are they becoming good citizens of the host country? And I'm sure there's examples of the latter, Barry, and the hatred doesn't, you know, it's a, not a generalized thing from any of us, but, you know, in my heart, you just see how quickly we're changing and how quickly uh, we are falling behind, you know, white British nationals, Christians, all my Jewish friends feel increasingly pushed out. Um, and in Paris, there's parts of Paris, the suburbs, you would not go because it's controlled by Muslims who want nothing to do with 
uh, Western culture who applauded when Notre Dame burnt down, which I don't believe was an accident either. And interestingly, with the French presidential elections, because there's been such this sort of upsurge, uptick of violence in the Muslim suburbs, Macron, centrist, is moving right. He's moving towards Marine Le Pen because he knows he has to take a strong line on this separatism that's going on with the Muslim population. Uh, but in my heart, I'm just sad that, that they come to our country but don't want to be part of it. You know, there's an opportunity, as our Indian friends show us brilliantly, to make our country better. And we can be better together, but they really choose to live apart. You know, after World War II here in the US, my parents uh, came here and spoke no English, um, had no money, had no way to support themselves other than learn the language, learn the constitution, learn the Declaration of Independence, study for citizenship, and become good Americans as they raised me to be. And the, it used to be we were, in the US anyway, a melting pot of numerous yeah. cultures and religions and creeds and ethnicities and, and countries of origin. And yet now certain immigrants come. And like you said, in, in Great Britain and other parts of Europe, like you said, in Paris, there are no go zones where they speak their own language, they keep their own culture, they're on the dole. And for some reason, each of these host countries keeps pumping out the money. They're already broke, and yet the doors are still open. Oh, absolutely. You know, my elderly friends can't get a new hip. They're told that if you're over 75, you can't have your eyes treated. And yet we provide translation services for Urdu, for every language there is with our socialized healthcare service. But our own elderly, who've paid in all their lives, can't access healthcare. Yeah, welcome to the future that looks bleak and getting darker. Thanks for coming on, Katie. And uh, I want to remind everyone, if they haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our text message alert system by sending simple text, the word TRUTH to 88202. Push send. You'll be signed up for free. You'll get all of Katie and Barry and everybody else for free forever. We never charge for content and we'll keep you informed. For Barry. And Katie, thanks so much for joining us today on ATP Report.